Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Doc, from SampleKings.com. Yo, if you like our videos, please subscribe and check it out. This is our video on the Fire's Guy for the M1 Mac. And like it if you like it. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Doc from SableKings.com. And what I want to talk about today, obviously as you can see here from the title, it's Buyer's Guide, which Mac is best for music production. I own a Mac, and uh, if you're gonna think of buying one, you should probably own a Mac, rather than just starting out like that. And I wanted to buy a new one. So I used to keep my Macs about three or four years, more like four years or so and more. And then I'll try to get a newer one if it looks like it's gonna be really good. So I saw the M1 chip, looked good, saw the reviews, saw the testing, that's really good. So I wanted to buy one. I figured everything out and I got one that I like a lot. I got it about three and a half months ago and I've been using it. It's awesome. It's the, you know what I'm talking about. It's in there, it's killing it. So I wanna talk about what you can do to get one. Keep within your budget if you're gonna buy a new Mac, of course. Don't try to go outside your budget because these chips are really good, but with all the hype and the way they sell computers today, you might spend more than you need to spend. This video is for audio engineers, music producers, and musicians. If you have an older Mac and you wanna sell it, trade it in, and then get a brand new Mac. Are you a PC user and you wanna go to Mac? Do you understand the Mac platform? Are you gonna buy a new Mac and are you gonna use the same application that you've been using that helps you at your work or whatever you're doing with your Mac? Now, one way to do this, of course, is to go here to your Apple device where it has a big Apple in the left-hand corner. And then we wanna to go to About This Mac. I'll click here where it says System Report. Now I'm gonna go here to Applications. It'll populate with a list here. We'll fill this whole list up once it figures it out. And then here we have a list of all the applications on this Mac. Now, I'm gonna look at one software I'm looking at I use a lot here sometimes, uh, recently to make videos for, which is the MPC platform. So we're gonna look for the MPC, and we have it right here, it's MPC. And we'll go here to the right-hand side, we'll see it's Intel. So that's Intel-based. And so Apple can translate that using the Rosetta 2, which is already installed in the Mac. So it can use Intel, okay? Now to find out more about other applications, it's easy. You wanna go right here where it says Kind on the upper right-hand side. So we can scroll down and see what kind of applications there are. There are 32-bit, there are Apple Silicon applications, there are Intel applications, and there are also universal applications and other. There's other right here too as well. And then there's universal applications right here. Now universal applications are applications that can work where it could be Intel, whatever, but what happens is that that application is in Apple Silicon and then it optimizes whatever the application is for Apple Silicon. Now there are various hardware devices like analog digital converters that have applications that work with those machines. And those applications should also be checked to make sure they're gonna work with the new Apple Silicon. Now in this picture here, from what I understand, Slate is not going to update their software, but always understand all the software and the devices you wanna use before you start to buy that new M1 Mac. Four chips to choose from. We have the M1, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and the M1 Ultra. Now, first off, I probably would eliminate the M1 Ultra because the majority of people aren't doing video or graphics. We're just doing music, and this is a music production buying guide. So I wouldn't use that. But if you're recording audio at 192 kilohertz per audio file, these are huge files. 
and you've got a storm somewhere. And also, you're going to need the RAM in order to play it back and move it around and cut and paste all the editing you might want to do. So that's 128 RAM here on the Ultra. But it's not cost effective because majority of this chip is for insane graphics and super dope video. So look, I wouldn't go that way. Next, we have the Max. Now the Max can be used as 32 core. Matter of fact, you can go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and it's 32 core of GPU. But we're not using much graphics when we're actually making music. We just need the power and the space to store all our files, including using our sound libraries. For the Max, most people won't need the Max. But for people who have huge libraries of sounds and samples, and they may be doing some video, the Max is good. The other two are perfect. Let's start with our first chip, and this is the Apple M1 chip. This chip is seen in the MacBook Pro 13-inch Mac. Now, this is a great chip for amateurs, for hobbyists, for part-timers. It has eight cores in it, which is great. You have four efficiency cores and four performance cores. Now, this is a great balance between power and performance. So you get the power, and of course, you get the performance because you can actually keep a lot more battery life because it's utilizing the chip in a way that's more efficient. Now, this is for songwriters. Let's say a songwriter who has a guitar and he's like doing these amp synths and he's trying to make some tracks up, he's got libraries for drums and some bass lines. This is good for that. Also good for touring musicians. Let's say you're touring somewhere, you got some backing tracks you want to use, maybe background vocals or drums or something. You can put them on here and sync them in time with the show. Or for DJs as well too. If you're a DJ and you want to have some extra tracks in the show, you can put them on here and sync it with the system. And it's also great for pro engineers. Let's say, for example, you're a pro engineer and all you want to do is just record vocals in here, right? And record some guitars, mostly live instruments you want to record. Well, this is great. You can pull it up, you can record them, and you can track a lot of tracks in here and the system will not complain. The beauty of the M1, it's cost efficient. It won't cost so much, it won't break the bank, and it does great work. Because if you're not gonna use so much CPU, you can make demos, you can record audio tracks in, and get the most out of it. Now this is the M1 Pro chip. Now there are two versions of this chip. One version has eight core CPU. The other one has a 10 core CPU. So there's just a two core difference pretty much, except on the first one is a 14 core GPU. And on the second one, it's a 16 core GPU. And also they both have 16 gigabytes of unified memory. Now, if I'm doing music production, I prefer to have space. And the first version gives you 5, 12 gigabyte space, SSD space, and that's a storage of files. I'm not really going to want that. I would prefer to get, and I suggest you might get, is a one terabyte SSD storage drive. The reason being, even if you use the 512 up and you're doing a production, the more space you have on a drive, the more efficient it operates. And this is very important when actually storing files on a drive. You need efficiency to use those files, play them back, transfer them around. That way there's plenty of space on that drive. And in my case, I would never go more than 512 as far as space on a terabyte drive because it makes it easier. Now in music production, you do need CPU. And but what I've noticed also with my Macs is that I don't even use half of it and I've got 10 cores. So I'm not sure if you want to go to here and then get 10 cores on this Pro chip. That might be cool if you want to and you think you need it, I understand that. What I probably would do though, is I would for sure make sure I would come to here for storage and I would spend the $200 for one terabyte of SSD storage. 
that I believe is really important. As I said before, the more space you have, the better the drive will operate. And then if you really want to, and you do think you need the money, because you have a lot of sample files, a big sample base you want to use, then I would probably go with the 32 gigabyte unified memory. But the 16 is good too, if you're not gonna use so many sample files in the session or have huge sample libraries. Our next chip is the Apple M1 Max. Now the Max is a chip that I use in my MacBook Pro because I do video. I do a lot of video. I can do maybe a hour and a half video project. I want to add a bunch of sounds. I have to have plus other samples within the music library and keyboard samples from let's say Logic. So I've got a lot of files I need to work with. I need to make sure I have a great system so that that way when I'm using it, there's no problem. So if you are doing video and you are doing complicated graphics and you're doing music, this is the chip for you. And it's for me as well. I love it. So here you'll notice the setup first we have is a 10 core CPU and a 24 GPU. And we have a neural engine. Now this neural engine is used for codecs of files. Like there could be a ProRes file or an H.264 or a 8K file. These files have codes embedded in them so that I can use them and Final Cut Pro can interpret what those files are and I can place them anywhere within a timeline to see how that video works out. I will also want to probably add in some drums here, bass line here or there, or I'll create music in Logic and use some other file like maybe Ableton Live along with MPC Beats and then bring those files into as well. So I'm talking about a pretty big project actually. But if you want to do music video and you're a new producer or you're a new guy starting out and you want to get a really good system, I would suggest probably go with the Max as long as you know how to use the Final Cut Pro and you know how to use Logic and maybe MPC and Ableton. You can use these softwares efficiently and you are going to do video, then this is for you, I believe. What you probably should do is figure out what you need. Figure out how much power you're gonna need. In my case, it was pretty simple. I need a robust platform of stuff to work with. I need to be able to use the encoding of video files. I need to do a lot of music and I need to maybe do some graphics as well. And so if you can do all that, then I went to here. I need 64 gigabytes of unified memory. It's got to be robust so that way, no matter what, it can get larger or smaller, I have no problems. And when you have this bigger system, you're going to need a lot of storage. And the reason why I need the storage is because the storage on these Apple machines is awesome. It's 400 gigabytes per second when transferring files back and forth. That's kind of awesome. So if I come back here, you will see here that, whoa, look at that. It can go to eight. That's pretty expensive right there. That's a very expensive machine. So in my case, you can go to four and that might be cool too as well. But the max chip must be used if you have video and you know how to do graphics and video and make music. This is a very good option. It just depends on how you configure your chip. Now next, I want to look at the Ultra. I'm not even going to buy this. This is so over the top. I don't know who I'm talking to out there who's going to really want this. But let's look at it. Hey, why not? So you'll see here, the Ultra is going to be in the studio, right? So we can configure the studio for this. Now look at the Ultra chip. It's 20 core, twice the core for CPU. It's 48 core for the GPU. I'm talking about great screen <laughs> graphics, really good. And here we're talking about 32 core for the neural engine. Now this is a lot. Now that's about $4,000 for this package. Let's select it here. You'll see we have to customize it, of course, right? And you'll see here to get the most, you can go here for 64 core GPU. 
or let's go for 64 gigabytes of unified memory or you can go up to 128 right let's get the storage on here because these files are going to require a lot of storage we're going to have to go with eight terabytes and then we get down here to the bottom where it's about 7,900 bucks. Now I can see buying this if I have a pretty big company and I've got several engineers working on uh, graphics and some guys doing video, you know, I may need to buy two of these. But for one person to have these, this is way over the top. Now one of the most important things that we have to figure out besides the chip is the RAM. How much RAM do you really need? Now, if you've got small libraries, not a whole lot of libraries of sample sounds, then I suggest the 16 gigabyte is enough. If you have large libraries of sample sounds and large libraries, let's say of strings and synths, you're doing a lot of arranging and production, then 32 gigabytes would be very good for you to use as well. Because selecting the right amount of RAM is really important because sometimes you may grow. You may grow as an audio engineer too as well and get even better at what you're doing and you may want to have more RAM. So I always say this, know your growth rate how you grow with your production, how many clients you bring in, how many other musicians you work with, what you need for your group or your band, or if you're DJing, you may want to grow into that. So pick the RAM that's going to be best for you and fit your nature or your personality and how you deal with music and how, how much you actually grow with your music as well. Now I want to talk about activity monitor. You want to monitor your activity sometimes just to know how much CPU power you're using and to keep a good eye on it if you think you got problems. So normally I'll take activity monitor and put in my dock, but to get to it, it's very simple. I'll press shift command and U here and it'll be at the top there, activity monitor, and I'll open it up right here, it's activity monitor. And so I can see what's on here, what's going on on my Mac. This is kind of cool. Now I'll go ahead to CPU and you'll see in CPU, we will see the little um, logo or the icon for anything. Like here's Google and I can see it's using 5.7 of CPU right there. I can scroll up here too, look at other items as well. And let's look for something I'm actually using. The machine. Here's the machine by Native Instrument. And we're using 21.8, right? That's not much at all. And we have reason here too as well. And we're using just 25. So I've got all these items open actually. And then once we have here, we have Avid, which I'm not using any of it right now. Just a little bit of Avid. So we have MPC though. Here's MPC and check this out. MPC and the other items are not, like for example, reason here is still Intel. And so is this native instrument hardware agent. And so is this MPC, which is Intel, right? So I'm not using much of my CPU here, but if I come here to memory, and this is a really important one here, you wanna see the memory pressure. And so memory pressure is an indicator of the system's ability to meet the memory requirements of the user's activity. So higher memory pressure indicates that the system is reaching its limits and performance may degrade. Now, when this goes from green to yellow, then you're at the peak. If it goes red, you're gonna need more CPU power. It's pretty simple. And Apple Axe explains this in their manuals on their website for CPU pressure. And one other thing I want to show you here too as well that I use, let's go to here. I will use this thing called Architect. And here it is right here. I'll open this up here. And what I want to do sometimes is look at a plugin to see how well it works. So for example, I've got Massive here, which is for Native Instrument. And it'll look it up. It'll go right through the whole plugin. It'll tell me, well, look, it's not Apple Silicon. 
it's 64-bit Intel, which is important to know, right? It says it's not quarantined, which means it's not quarantined from the system. It can be used, right? And so I will check apps using this application. So I'm gonna check EQ apps or plugins I get from other companies. You wanna check and make sure it matches your system. Now I wanna talk about the third most important thing. The first being the chip, the second being the RAM, and the third most important thing is the SSD hard drive space. This is really important. You may not realize it, but you're gonna need a lot of space. Not because the machine requires it, because you wanna run as fast as possible and as efficient as possible. So, the more space you have on the hard drive, for example, let's say you get four terabytes. You, I would say only use no more than two and leave the other two pretty much open. If you use three, okay, but also back it up. Like, okay, I made a project, it's about three terabytes. Let's take that and save it. You're doing music, you're not gonna get that much. If you're seeing a lot of samples and you're doing a big film score and you got a lot of charts and stuff going through here, we got a, a lot of samples from different sections of this film. Yeah, you're gonna need some space. But if you're doing video and you're also doing audio, you're gonna need a lot of space too as well. So it's always to get at least, if you need two, then buy four. Get as much as you can afford of space because it's gonna give you more efficiency in your project. So in my case, of course, I had to go with eight terabytes. I do a lot of video. And so I'm only gonna use maybe four terabytes at any one point in time. I leave more space open for me to have a lot more space inside the machine. It's very important to have enough efficiency. And if you're not using that much, you're gonna use two, go here. You're gonna use one, go here. But make sure that you have that space available and get the funds of what you can really afford. Don't go too far. Just far enough to get the machine that'll fit you.